Welcome in to Outkick the Show. Can never be safe enough. I legitimately can't see anything at all right now with these on. Uh, I'm your fearless leader, Clay Travis. Not so fearless with my incredible eclipse shades uh, that are currently activated. I can, I mean, stare (laughs) directly into the lights that they have on in the studio here and have zero impact at all. I just came in from outside. There was about two minutes of uh, viewership time where the clouds were not blocking the sun in the Nashville area, right at the apex. It was unbelievable. It was a life-fulfilling moment. Uh, I can't even keep up with this uh, argument. I I think the eclipse is the most overrated thing on the planet uh, when it comes to people taking, like, vacations or deciding that you have to adjust your schedule for it. If we didn't know that an eclipse was going to happen, and it was like the 1200s, I would be like, wow, this is pretty unbelievable. This is pretty badass. When you know, like, 100 years in advance when the eclipse are going to be, I feel like it's not that exciting. I'm more interested in whether it's going to snow or not than the eclipse because there is uncertainty on the snow. Could be cold enough, might not be cold enough. We know that the eclipse is going to happen. So I'll just say it. Eclipses are overrated on the on the horizon Fairly rated, underrated, overrated. Eclipse is overrated. I don't think Eclipse has played anybody. I don't think it deserves to be in the playoff. Doesn't have great strength of schedule. You get exactly what you would expect because you can look at the Eclipse calendar hundreds of years in advance. An average college football or basketball game, more exciting to me than the Eclipse. Will it or won't it snow? More exciting than the Eclipse. Will it or won't it Spun off a tornado, hurricanes, all of them more interesting, more exciting, more intriguing weather events to me, celestial events, than the eclipse. So put me down in the anti-eclipse category. All you telescope nerds running around like, oh my God, look, it's not. Yeah, I get it. You're super excited. Go play your flutes. Go buy your ice cream by yourself. Uh, and stand uncomfortably licking it while you watch the eclipse. You're all the same people to me. Uh, We got a lot to talk about, by the way. Um, Purdue, UConn is tonight. Um, WrestleMania 40. I went to WrestleMania 40 over the weekend. I turned 45 years old. Caitlin Clark, what is her legacy? Curb Your Enthusiasm ended last night. John Calipari to Arkansas. Um, But to me, the biggest story out there Dawn Staley, courtesy of Dan Zakshevsky at OutKick, asking the question, what should happen uh, as it pertains to men pretending to be women who want to play women's basketball? I'm going to break all that down for you as well as the ongoing uh, discussion. I'm also going to give you my prize picks picks, uh, which can pay out at 10 to 1. Uh, but in the meantime, I want you to know Price Picks, America's number one fantasy sports app. Biggest moments in college basketball happening right now, tonight. Uh, 9.20 Eastern, by the way. You might need to get some Crockett coffee so you can stay awake. Crockett coffee, best coffee in America. Uh, be a part of the action on Price Picks, men's and women's college basketball. Uh, coming up, obviously, women's basketball with South Carolina winning the title. You can get in on the playoff action coming up in the NHL and the NBA, all of that. You can win up to 100 times your money on prize picks as you and everyone else out there is competing not against each other but against prize picks itself i'm going to give you my picks coming up in a moment but in the meantime use code outkick you get a hundred dollars uh match hundred dollars up to a hundred dollar deposit download the app today get it done uh pick more pick less prize picks it's that easy um okay i'm going to give you my 10 to 1 uh picks payout here coming up in a moment but uh, let's start with all of the fallout surrounding uh, Zach, Zach, Zach Shesky asking Dawn Staley whether she believed that uh, women should be able to be defined to include men pretending to be women. Uh, first of all, a lot of people got fired up about when the question was asked and how dare he. And It's the perfect question at the perfect time. Um, 
a lot of these uh, individuals are not going to sit for full-length interviews without kick. It would have felt weirder, I think, to ask this question after a random SEC basketball game in January or February. Dawn Staley has been outspoken on a variety of different issues across the cultural landscape. Uh, and so asking her a question like this is actually very common at press conferences like these. At the Super Bowl, you ask a lot of times big picture questions about the NFL. At the college football playoff games, you ask coaches big picture questions about the stature and status of college football Time and place was perfect. The goal of a reporter should be to ask questions that are honest and get honest answers. And the marketplace has overwhelmingly agreed with OutKick's asking of that question as on Twitter alone, I believe it's over 30 million people have watched the clip of Dawn Staley answering that question. So let me just go ahead and dismiss all of the criticism associated with the question. Um, and also let you know, not surprisingly, people are mad at me. People are mad at OutKick. What I would say in general is this is why OutKick is growing so fast and why we are, in my opinion, the most influential sports media company in the country because we're the only uh, company that would even ask this question and we're the only company that would employ anyone even willing to ask this question. Uh, so I give credit to Dan Z uh, Zakszewski for asking this question um, and, uh, and doing so in such a, a, a great manner. Bigger picture here. This is hugely important um, because it goes to the very foundation of women's sports themselves. Who is allowed to play? Who is allowed to become a champion? Foundational elements of women's sports. And NIAI, NAIA, sorry, just banned trans athletes from being able to compete. They say you have to compete <clears throat> against the gender on your birth certificate. The NCAA has not done it yet. They should. And I would say straightforward, shame on Dawn Staley. She knows that men are bigger, stronger, and faster than women. She knows that a man pretending to be a woman could, especially if that man were in any way talented, Division Three state champion level basketball player for men uh if that player decided to play in women's college basketball they'd be better than Kaylin Clark better than Angel Reese better than anyone that is playing women's college basketball right now um and so she is choosing politics the trans cult Dawn Staley is over truth and that is something I can promise you that I will never do I will always tell you, for better or worse, exactly what I think. Sometimes, you guys are going to get upset with my opinions. So be it. I'm not interested in saying things that I think people are going to always agree with. I'm interested in telling you exactly what I think. Um, and that's why I can say it's a time for choosing. You either are in favor of men and women playing separate sports, or you are falling victim to the trans cult. Some people out there I give a little bit of a pass to because they don't know enough about sports, and so they just buy into this idea that there's no biological difference. Uh, but Dawn Staley knows this isn't true because her girls scrimmage against boys from South Carolina, and she regularly gives them shout-outs. These are just intramural-level boys basketball players who dominate against Dawn Staley's national champion women's team. Um, and so Dawn Staley knows that this is illogical, that this is irrational, and frankly, that this is indefensible. And uh, I think she is on the wrong side on this issue. I give her credit for answering it. We also asked, uh, Dan did, Iowa's women's coach. She said it's an important question. I'm paraphrasing, but she doesn't want to answer it right now. That certainly is her right as well as she was getting ready for the championship game. I hope that she actually will answer it and follow it up. Uh, this is not a this should not be a difficult situation. I asked you guys to vote on Twitter. Ninety seven percent of you said that women should be women's sports should be made up of women. Uh, three percent of you said that you thought men identifying as women should be able to compete as women. This is not a difficult call. I also knew. So shame on Don Staley for her answer here. Uh, in the same way that I'm in favor of 12U baseball being made up only of boys that are 12 and younger, in the same way that I'm in favor of heavyweight boxing, not including uh, a heavyweight boxer uh, and a flyweight or flyweight boxing, uh, including a heavyweight boxer. We have weight classes in fighting. We have age limits in sports. 
we have men's and women's sports because the idea is we're trying to create an even playing field for all men and or uh, all women, not all men who want to pretend to be women. This is a flagrant example of when inclusion becomes exclusion because girls are losing their scholarships to men uh, and women are having new sports records set by men pretending to be women. And this is happening all over the country in a variety of different sports right now. And it is a big deal. And the NCAA needs to quit hiding. They need to quit allowing men to be able to enter into women's uh, locker rooms. They need to stop this uh, from being able to occur. Now, um, I knew and I told the guys this. uh, I told our editor team. I said, be ready. Uh, This is going to shift from Dawn Staley's answer which is going to be very difficult to defend. It's going to shift to how dare OutKick ask the question? How dare Clay Travis and OutKick being able to get credentials? Uh, How dare uh, this question be asked at this point in time, right? No one's actually defending Dawn Staley by and large. And I think it's important any time that you ask, it's a time for choosing. And um, CNN has a guy named Bakari Sellers. I don't know where he ranks on the CNN opinion list. Uh, My guess would be he's like 75th most important person to go on air at CNN. They pay him a couple hundred thousand dollars not to be honest with his audience. It's embarrassing for him. Uh, But he decided to come after me. He said, I think Clay Travis needs to realize Dawn Staley is literally better than him at life. Objectively, she's great. And you've been relegated to a troll who must attempt to stoke culture wars. Clay, have you ever asked yourself, what will I be remembered for? The answer right now is a bad haircut on Fox every so often. Do better, my guy. Um, So, no, I don't ask myself very often, what will I be remembered for? Um, I think it's an incredibly arrogant thing to do. The vast majority of people are only going to be remembered by their kids and their close family members, the people who actually know them best. So no, I don't sit around like, what is society going to think of me? I give that zero thought. Uh, What I care about, so you know, is what do my kids think about me? And right now, I think they would say that I'm a really good dad uh, because that's what I focus on the most. So I've got a 16-year-old, I got a 13-year-old, I got a 9-year-old. I think everybody should focus not on what the larger world thinks about them, but upon what their house thinks about them, about in particular, if you're a parent, what your kids think about you. My goal is to raise three strong boys uh, who are able to go out into the world and hopefully be incredibly successful fathers, incredibly successful entrepreneurs, incredibly successful uh, business people, uh, incredibly successful athletes, whatever they want to do, I want them to work their hardest and try to achieve the highest possible results. So that's what I focus on. But what's instructive about this is this is just an attack on me. And I don't think I've actually said anything that controversial. I believe women's sports should be made up of women and not men who are pretending to be women. And so my response to Bakari Sellers or anybody else out there that is trying to make an argument like this is it's a simple question. If you have an issue with me and you have and or you have an issue with OutKick, asking Dawn Staley whether men should be able to compete as women's uh, women's athletes in basketball, women's basketball, um, do you think that's right? It's a yes or no question. Should men be able to identify as women and compete in women's athletics to win championships? Um, Bakari Sellers wouldn't answer that question. He came at me tried to insult me, failed. Uh, Then I just asked a simple question. Okay, you want to engage in a conversation about this. Do you believe that men should be able to identify as women and compete in women's athletics? He won't answer the question. That's an easy question, yes or no. If you say yes, we disagree. You're on the same side as Don Staley. If you say no, then we agree. He won't answer the question because unlike me, He's afraid of what the left in his party will react and say if he shares an opinion they don't like, which is why he came back to me and said, there are 33 trans athletes playing NCAA sports out of 520,000 athletes. That's point oh whatever, 6%. You stoke fear. You play on the fringes. That's my point. You, Sage, Jason, et cetera, are pariah because you're decently anti-intellectual. I don't even know what that means. 
my brother, it's not a personal attack. I don't know you. I know Dawn Staley. I've seen women and little girls cry when she smiles and hugs them. She's just means more. Not a very intelligent response, but I think it's important for you to get my response. I'm glad you like hugs. You have a daughter. One day when a boy beats her in a women's sport, she'll probably want a hug from her dad. Then she'll ask you why you didn't stand up for women's sports and her ability to win a championship fairly and honestly. Good luck, bud. Now, I got three boys. I don't have a daughter. But you can rest damn sure confident that if I had a daughter, there is no way in hell a boy pretending to be a girl would ever be able to compete with her in any sport that I was involved in. If I was a dad, I would take my team off the court if a boy decided that he was going to identify as a girl and try to compete against them. It's wrong. In the same way that when I coached Little League Baseball, I wouldn't allow somebody five years older than my Little League team to compete. I believe in basic standards of fairness. It's a time for choosing. Dawn Staley, the limited credit I'll give her is she answered the question she didn't have to. She's wrong. I believe she's in a cult that elevates trans people. And I think that's really, really unfortunate. Because she's choosing men over women. She's validating something that is untrue in an effort that actually ends up excluding women from being able to win championships and compete. And I don't think the number of them matters. They're growing, right? But somehow saying there aren't very many now, to me, is not a defense. If he's right, I don't know what the numbers are. If he's right and there are 33 men pretending to be women and in the NCAA competing right now, that's 33 too many. They're not women. They shouldn't be able to compete. So the standard has to be there's men's sports and there's women's sports. And note, this doesn't happen for men. I think this is really important. There are no women pretending to be men that become famous. There's no Dylan Mulvaney. There's no Bud Light associated with this. Men just kind of feel sorry for women who wish they were men. Not threatened. Wimpy men are not a threat to men. In general, men aspire to be bigger, stronger, and faster than we are. That's why every male superhero is an absolute physical freak. Bulging muscles, big, strong, tough. That's why if you look at athletics, men aspire to be better at sports than we are. We aspire to be more successful in business than we are. Much of maleness is about competition and attempting to climb to a higher standard. That is, honestly, I would say, what defines masculinity in a big way, competition, trying to be smarter, bigger, faster, stronger than we are right now. Reaching for some goal that we don't currently have. That's why we don't live in caves anymore, okay? This is, I think, one of the major issues of our time. And so if you aren't willing to stand up and say, a man pretending to be a woman isn't really a woman, then what truth are you going to stand up for? There are billions of people on the planet. Every single one of them has been born by a woman. Womanhood and birth is undefeated. No man has ever been able to have a child. No man ever will be biologically able to have a child. You can't put on heels and makeup and grow long hair and get fake boobs and argue, and even a fake vagina, that you're a woman. You are not. You are born male or you are born female. Some tiny percentage of people have sex organs of both. That's unfortunate. That's awful. Nature isn't perfect. But doctors don't get your birth wrong. What you are born at birth is who you should compete with for the rest of your life. That is easy. That is truth. And I am very comfortable standing on it.
And to the extent that anybody wants to judge me after I'm dead for what I stood for, I turned 45 on Saturday. I feel pretty good about that. Found it out, kick. It's a $100 million plus company. Got a law degree. Got an MFA. Got married. Have three healthy boys. It's a pretty good 45 year. I'm the biggest radio show on the country. I get to go on the biggest cable news network and say exactly what I think. I've written four or five books, whatever the math is. It's a pretty good roster of accomplishment for 45 years. But ultimately, and I say this to all of you, you're not going to be judged by people that you don't know unless you are so famous that who cares? One of the great things about history you learn is a lot of times you don't know the truth about somebody until 100 years after they're gone when historians decide then whether you're a good or bad person. I'm going to do what one of my idols did. CrockettCoffee.com. Go check it out. Trying to hit $70,000 in sales today. Launched this thing six days ago. Going to hit $70,000 in sales. That's the goal today. It's pretty crazy. CrockettCoffee.com. Go sign up. You know what Davy Crockett's life motto was? Be sure you're right, then go ahead. I'm sure I'm right, and I'm going to keep right on going ahead into being a magnet of coffee, evidently, at CrockettCoffee.com. 70K in sales? It's crazy. Crazy to do. This is, what, the sixth day since we've launched? to be doing 70K in sales. I bet there's never been a coffee company in America that has started with this much sales. Only advertising this, this show, and Clay and Buck. Haven't bought an ad anywhere, we're rolling. Um, I wanna tell you, this John Calipari to Arkansas story, absolutely blowing my mind. Um, it is crazy even for SEC levels, crazy. Now think about this. SMU decides that they need to join the ACC. And as a result, they go and snag Andy Enfield from USC. Eric Musselman, who's the head coach at Arkansas, then gets hired by USC, opening up the Arkansas job. Just about a month ago, less than a month ago, uh, uh, Barnhart, who is the uh, athletic director at Kentucky, I believe, comes out and says, hey, John Calipari's coming back. Arkansas suddenly needs a coach. They go and offer a five-year deal reportedly to John Calipari. He gives the peace sign and is leaving Kentucky. Let me know, by the way, Adam, if any of this has changed because it's obviously a fast-moving story. I think it's a great hire for Arkansas. Remember, John Calipari was just down the road a little ways in Memphis. He recruited at an incredibly high level at Memphis. He has obviously recruited at a really high level at Kentucky. I think John Calipari will get really, really good basketball players in at Arkansas. Quality of player has not been his issue. I think the standard of performance at Arkansas is lower. I think they will be ecstatic to get John Calipari. I think he'll be a really good fit for them. I like the hire. What should Kentucky do? To me, there are a couple of calls that you make. You call Danny Hurley at uh, UConn, offer him God knows how much money, see if he'll come. I think he'll say no. We'll see. Uh, I would also get in contact with Jay Wright. What he did at Villanova was amazing. See if he'd be willing to come out of uh, retirement coach at Kentucky. I think both those guys will say no. If I am correct in that, then I would look at several other guys. Bruce Pearl. Auburn's Bruce Pearl, formerly Tennessee's Bruce Pearl, Wisconsin-Milwaukee's Bruce Pearl, Southern Indiana's Bruce Pearl. I think Bruce Pearl would win a national championship at Kentucky. I think he would be a phenomenal hire. He's got the temperament where he would lean into Big Blue Nation. He would be beloved almost instantaneously in Lexington. His team plays hard. Uh, they play a high caliber of basketball. Uh, he would recruit very well, better than he even has at Auburn. If Tennessee hadn't fired him, I think Bruce Pearl would have won a national championship at Tennessee. I think that was one of the worst decisions Tennessee's ever made. Uh, I think, look, Bruce Pearl got to the Final Four at Auburn. He had a real chance to win a national title there. He's won multiple SEC championships at Tennessee and at Auburn. He would win at an incredibly high level. I think he'd win a national championship at Kentucky. I think it would be a phenomenal hire. Um, I also think you could go chase Billy Donovan. Uh, 
Billy Donovan was the white whale that Kentucky wanted before when he was at Florida. They wanted to bring him up to Lexington, uh, gone into the NBA, hasn't been a great fit there. I think Billy Donovan would be a phenomenal coach. I'm not sure how well he would do in the NIL era. I don't know how well that he would recruit. I have bigger questions about him than Bruce Pearl. Another guy out there, we don't know the exact buyout, Nate Oates. Uh, I have issues with Nate Oates with the way that he and Alabama responded to the Brandon Miller murder uh, investigation of a young mother off of Tuscaloosa's campus. I don't have any issue with the on-court production or coaching of Nate Oates. I think he would be a phenomenal hire, young guy, uh, has proven that he's going to win at a high level, would be a devastating loss to Alabama. Uh, I think you make a run at Nate Oates as well uh, and see whether or not he'd be interested in going to Kentucky. It's obviously far easier to win a national championship at Kentucky than it is at Alabama. Uh, I would also look at Chris Beard, head coach of Ole Miss. I think he would do a good job. Um, and, uh, and those are kind of the names that I would focus on. A lot of people going uh, down to Baylor uh, and saying that they want Scott Drew. Um, to me, uh, He's already won a national championship. He's been phenomenal. Is he a little bit too much of a Boy Scout for Kentucky? Just a question. I don't know the answer. I like him. He's obviously won at an incredibly high level at a private Baptist school in Texas. Uh, the X's and O's are not a question. The recruiting is not a question. I just wonder whether the job might be a bit too big for him uh, would be uh, one question uh, that that – might be worth asking uh, as it pertains to Kentucky. I love this story. The other guy I would put out there, what about Rick Pitino? Kentucky fans, if they're being honest, have never fallen out of love with Rick Pitino. I loved Rick Pitino at Kentucky. In many ways, Calipari was an attempt to be Rick Pitino. Pitino came into Kentucky, revitalized that program, brought them to uh, a national championship, performed at an incredibly high level. I think really straight up, leaving aside all the off-the-field, off-the-court related issues, you could make an argument that Rick Pitino is the best head basketball coach in all of college basketball. Now, he's older. I think he's got five good years left, at least as a coach. I think if you gave Rick Pitino five years at Kentucky, I think he would win a national championship too. Uh, so that would be amazing. Can you imagine Patino against Calipari? Even as is, um, Calipari coming back to Rupp Arena or Kentucky going to Arkansas, rivalries, hate, spice is great for college athletics. It's great for the NFL too. Um, I think this takes it to a next level. I saw this story last night right as I was finishing watching uh, WrestleMania and I could not uh, believe it. Uh, I mentioned WrestleMania here. Um, amazing time. Went up on Saturday. Saw The Rock, Cody Rhodes. Uh, all that was an unbelievable time. Took all three of my kids and Laura. Uh, I turned 45 on Saturday. Uh, had an absolutely phenomenal time with them, uh, taking them to that event. Last night, I thought it was great. The Undertaker was back. John Cena was back. One of the best five-minute segments in the final wrestling match uh, of the night. I understand some of you hate wrestling. My boys have loved it. I loved it as a kid with Hulk Hogan, Macho Man, uh, and, and that era, Hacksaw Jim Duggan, all of those guys. And now my uh, kids loved it as well. So we had a phenomenal time going to, uh, going to watch that. Uh, Purdue, UConn. And so thanks to everybody that we hung out with there. Uh, fabulous time. Great uh, experience. Purdue, UConn. I am going to go. I've been getting hammered because I bet against UConn. It doesn't matter. I am going Purdue plus six and a half, and I'm going to take the under 145. So as I am looking right now, Purdue plus six and a half and the under 145. You have been able to blindly bet UConn for two straight years, and they basically cover every game. They haven't been challenged really. Uh, to much extent. I know they had a close first half against Alabama. They were down a little bit. But by and large, UConn, if they were to win tonight, has been amidst the most dominant run in the history of college basketball. 
not an exaggeration. I think it would be probably the most dominant run in modern era, obviously UCLA back in the day, but in a modern era, and I define modern era as basically, I don't know, since 1990, 2000, uh, something in the, in the 64-team college basketball tournament. Uh, if UConn wins tonight, and if they win comfortably, it'll be the most dominant back-to-back tournament championships that we have seen since the tournament went to 64 teams. I think that's fair. Um, I'm on the under. I think Purdue brings it into the mud. Uh, I've got plus six and a half. I mentioned prize picks. This is a 10 to one payout. All right. Uh, Zach Eady, less than 38 and a half points, rebounds, and assists. It's a four uh, teamer, four player. Donovan Klingen, more than 13 and a half points. So that's the battle at the center. I think that Klingon is going to be the toughest matchup that Zach Eady has had so far. I think Klingon will have more than 13 and a half points. I think Zach Eady under 35, 38.5 points, rebounds, and assists. Braden Smith's been playing awful. I don't like his abilities against these UConn guards that I think are going to eat him up. Braden Smith, less than 22 points, rebounds, and assists combined. Uh, and then Cam Spencer, more than, I believe it's 23 points, rebounds, and assists. Okay, so that is my quad. That will get you a 10 to 1 return. Uh, Edie less than points, rebounds, assists, clinging more than 13 and a half points, battle at centers. And then guards, Braden Smith, less than 22 points, rebounds, and assists. Cam Spencer, uh, more than 23 points, rebounds, and assists. There you have it. Um, that is my pick associated with that. Caitlin Clark. A lot of people are like, okay, is she the GOAT? How would you assess this? How would you analyze Caitlin Clark? First of all, incredible career. Like I said, congrats to South Carolina on finishing undefeated. But this is really the Caitlin Clark story. Um, And to me, Caitlin Clark is in a unique spot. I can't think really of any team sport athlete that has ever been bigger than the sport she is playing before she even gets to the pros. Think about this for a minute. If Caitlin Clark had lost 65 or 70 percent of the overall viewership for women's college basketball would have vanished overnight. People say, oh, women's college basketball is so strong. No, Caitlin Clark is a unicorn. She's a meteor streaking across the night sky. Uh, people care about Caitlin Clark. They don't particularly care about women's college basketball. The analogy that's probably best to make is uh, Ronda Rousey. In the same way that a decade ago, everybody had an opinion about Ronda Rousey in UFC, and women's UFC has continued post Ronda Rousey, nobody cares. I can't name you a women's UFC fighter right now. Unless you're a diehard UFC fan, you probably can't either. Ronda Rousey was women's UFC fighting. As soon as she lost, the sport vanished. Nobody really cared. She was bigger than the men for a short period of time. She lost Holly Holm, and then I think she lost again, and it was basically all over. Her entire career was finished, and the UFC has never recovered on the women's side. Other analogy. I think you can say she's like Tiger Woods in that Tiger brought in a ton of people who otherwise did not care about golf. I think you can say she's like Michael Jordan in that Michael Jordan brought in a ton of people who otherwise did not care about uh, the NBA. Difference is both of those guys were professionals by the time they became supremely famous. Caitlin Clark is going to the WNBA. Her brand is bigger and more valuable than the entire WNBA. And that is why you are seeing so many people out there attack Caitlin Clark because women's basketball, instead of welcoming her, has actually been ripping her. I think there's many different levels here. I think the fact that she's straight and that she's white does not work in her favor in uh, women's college basketball uh, universe or in the WNBA uh, because there's a lot of lesbians and there's a lot of minorities. And I think that does factor in. Being a straight white girl uh, makes people uncomfortable. I'm talking about WNBA people. It's weird, uh, but I think it does. Um, the other thing here, the question is, how much of her celebrity translates to the WNBA? Uh, what I would say if I were giving advice is put her on the women's uh, college team. I mean, sorry, the women's uh, U.S. women trying to win the gold medal. 
I think it's a no-brainer. Way more people will watch it. Uh, the other analogy I'm using there, kind of the women's soccer team, but there were a lot of famous people on the U.S. women's soccer team. I'm not sure anybody ever ascended to the heights of uh, where you're seeing now Caitlin Clark. So there isn't a lot of historical replication here. I don't think this is about women's college basketball. I think this is about Caitlin Clark becoming a superstar. Um, and so how exactly this translates going forward, I don't think there's an easy answer. But I do think she should be uh, praised because she has elevated the sport around her due to her own popularity <coughs> to a level, frankly, that has never been seen before. Um, finally, a couple of other things. Um, curb your enthusiasm. Uh, I love curb your enthusiasm. Final season ended last night, uh, in theory, although Larry David, 76 years old, may decide to come back with a 13th season. Um, I thought it was kind of a weak season. And I say that as somebody who otherwise loves Curb. And I think it was a weak season because, unfortunately, Larry David made it super political. Um, he tried to base the entire season on a con an idea that Georgia's racist and unfair. And while there's still a decent, uh, as it pertains to whether or not you can get a drink of water while voting, um, it's just a lie, the entire premise of his show. And it's exaggerated. I get it for com comedic effect. But I thought that the politics took over the humor in this season. And I think it's actually, unfortunately, a reflection of Trump derangement syndrome and the degree to which Larry David has bought into the idea that somehow there's a lot of MSNBC on it, um, that somehow uh, that, that Trump is uh, the Antichrist, that he's Hitler. I would love to hear. I mean, honestly, I've never met Larry David. I'd like to meet him. Uh, he's obviously Jewish. I'd love to hear what he thinks about uh, the attack on October 7th by the Palestinians. Um, and what does he think about many Democrats turning their backs on Israel's right to defend itself? Um, I'd love to meet Larry David. I'd like to golf with him. I'm awful. Um, but, uh, but I thought this was the weakest uh, season of Curb that has existed um, so far. Uh, finally, Trump came out with his position on abortion and essentially said, hey, it's now a state's issue. I wrote about this quite a lot in my book. Um, the radical position is the one that the Democrats have adopted. 80% plus of Americans oppose third trimester abortions. I do too. I'm opposed to third trimester abortions. Uh, I believe in IVF. I believe to the extent that you guys care. I try to be as honest with you as possible. Uh, I believe in the morning after pill being legal. I believe in birth control being legal. All those things. You can. Uh, by the way, you're welcome to disagree wholeheartedly with me on this. I'm not telling you what you should believe. I'm just telling you what I believe. Uh, I think the line should be drawn somewhere in the first trimester where abortion is permissible, um, as many states are doing. Where exactly that should be from a week perspective, I don't know. Uh, I'm not claiming to tell you that it has to be six weeks or it has to be nine weeks or it has to be 12 weeks or whatever the math is. Uh, I don't believe third trimester abortion should be legal. Uh, I believe in exceptions for rape, uh, incest, life of a mother. And uh, I think that the line should be drawn somewhere in the first trimester. That's my position. I think it should be left to the states as it is now. I think Trump's position on abortion is very similar to my own position. Um, and certainly, I don't expect all of you to be like, oh, I didn't know what I thought about abortion. Then Clay Travis talked about it. Now I've made up my mind. Uh, so those are my thoughts. Uh, I love all of you. DBAP unless you need to SBAP. Uh, I am Clay Travis. Enjoy the eclipse. Most overrated weather-related celestial condition that occurs, in my humble opinion. I will see you guys tomorrow.